any of the youth group would like to join us, Drew wants to do um, Glory Spout. <laughs> Praise God. Ain't it good to know the risen Savior? Amen. I'm glad I do. 
Tiffany and Kennedy's gonna do this blood.
my sins forgot there is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me
sing it with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, see, I'm glad to have Haley up here on stage with us today. Appreciate her. Brenda McBride and Amber and just uh, her family. Uh, survey the crowd. Don't want to embarrass anyone and certainly don't want to try to leave you out, but several of you maybe if uh, haven't been here for a while, we're glad to have you, glad to see you. Yeah. And uh, maybe some new people in here to service this morning, looks like some new faces. We want to welcome you today to the service of the Lord. We appreciate you coming this way and hope you do get blessed and come back to be with us again. Uh, Scott, I might need a little, I don't know if I got enough, maybe a little more mic if you would make it easier on me. Uh, Luke chapter 24, if you have your Bibles, Luke 24. Luke 24, beginning with verse 13. Your with Brother Mike Vice this morning. Appreciate him again being with us today. Uh, hope, Lord willing, if we all tarry, uh, maybe we'll have you back again here, Mike, for sure. Appreciate all the ministers and all those who... Uh, the Gigli and all of them who preach the Word of God. Uh, different ones in here today. We appreciate all of you. Appreciate your service for the Lord. Luke 24, beginning with verse 13. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. Now that's all the text I'm going to read to you, but I'll challenge you. So later on, if you find in your reading, to read all the way through 50, the 53rd verse to finish out that chapter. Uh, this is, again, here these two travelers, and uh, they are leaving Jerusalem, and they're on the road to Emmaus. The road to Emmaus, Emmaus means in the uh, Greek and Hebrew, means warm springs, warm springs. But these two men are traveling and they're leaving Jerusalem uh, and after the uh, eighth day or after the Lord Jesus Christ. They've got already news that he is resurrected. He is uh, that they uh, brought news unto them. They were told by the women. They came back and told the others that uh, Jesus was not in the tomb, that he is risen and so forth. And those, uh, they got the news, but they still had a problem. You see, they had a head knowledge, but they didn't have a heart knowledge. They still didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus. You'd be surprised here in the Word of God that would that each and every one who came upon that morning, especially the women, the Bible says the women came first to that tomb or early. Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, and they came there. And of course, Luke records Joanna. They had a women's meeting there at the tomb at the graveside of Jesus. And they was concerned about that. They brought spices to anoint his body. They were concerned about the uh, stone that was rolled before the tomb. But the Lord had already, the angel of the Lord came down and rolled the stone away. And they got the message that was upon the tombstone. I know there was a message upon the tombstone because there was a messenger, the messenger of the Lord. Said the angel of the Lord said, he is not here, he is risen. And thanks be unto God, he is not here. He is not there. He is risen. Uh, why seek ye the living among the dead? He asked that question. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Jesus Christ arose from the dead. There they got the word, and they seen the empty tomb. The stone had rolled away, and they returned back. But even then, Mary still needed something else. He's going to return back to take word to them. And I'll get into that a little later. Some of them needed some other things. They didn't see the body. They didn't see the empty tomb. But they began to turn. As Mary did, she noticed there's a garden where the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea was. And she's supposing him to be the gardener. The gardener was working. And seemingly in standing in the garden working there. And she began to have a conversation. And of course it was Jesus, the resurrected Lord. 
a steel within their hearts and she wouldn't have known it was Jesus. Do you know how she knew that it was Jesus? Is when he spake to her. She spent time with God. She knew the voice of God. And when he called her by name, Mary, she said unto him, Rabboni. And she fell down at his feet and she recognized him as a resurrected Savior. It's one thing you see sometimes she did not really. After all, the angel of the Lord and the stone had rolled away. I hear he had to appear again as a gardener unto her, the resurrected Savior. And give her, he said, he spoke to her, and then she believed. Then they went back to tell the others. But you know the others, the 11 other disciples uh, that followed Jesus very closely. Now there's, there's people that follow Jesus in a different way. There's those that were uh, James and Peter and John. They were in the inner circle. They followed very closely to Jesus. Then there's others, the other disciples of Jesus followed a little bit uh, farther back. And then there was those other disciples that are a little bit farther on back. Might I say it still works the same today. There's some people that really want to get a close to God. And then there's others that like to fall back and follow at a distance as well and just observe the things of God. We're hearing the word of God that these men, they went back to tell the others and Peter and him went to the tomb. And Peter and him looked and they saw the empty tomb. But he still did not believe. Peter went in and he saw though the grave clothes, the grave, the linens that were wrapped around Jesus. And if Jesus himself, they're petrified by the grave clothes upon that, he saw them always wrapped up. Not unwrapped, but they were continually wrapped. Jesus passed through the grave clothes. He had passed on through the tomb. He didn't need the stone rolled away. It was only the stone, the Lord, the angel of the Lord rolled the stone away so that we could look in and see that he was not there. But Jesus could pass through the grave clothes. He could pass through the stone. Later on, he passed through the doors in the, in the room where they was. But Jesus could appear anywhere. And Jesus himself, he turned though, and what got really Peter was not so much the grave clothes as the napkin that was beside of the door. And the custom was, and you all know that, probably have heard about that, the napkin was whenever it was folded. Someone had folded it and neatly had it laying there by the door. And being a Jew, the custom was at dinner time, if you was to take that, when you was done with the meal, you was to take your napkin and you was to just simply wipe your face with it and finish and drop it on the dish or the table like that. It meant you was done. But if you had a little something else and there was something yet better to come, then you was to fold it up. And you see, and your manners was, you was to fold your napkin very neatly and lay it down. And meanings that you were not finished yet at the table, that you still come back. And the best is yet to come. He said, I'll come back for the dessert. And the best is still yet to come. That's what he's saying. The best is still yet to come. I'm not finished yet, but Peter got the message. He's coming back. He's coming back, isn't he? But it's more than that. Peter went out and he began to believe. And he went back to the other sires. They began to congregate and so forth. But they told these very men, these followers here, they were not those that were of the closest of the twelve. These men here were third. They followed back at a distance. And here in the word of God, they began to leave Jerusalem. Passover has taken place. Notice here in the word of God, there are seven days of Passover. They observed the seven days of Passover that were in Jerusalem from Palm Sunday through Saturday here it was all the Sabbath now this was the eighth day of the Lord Jesus Christ the resurrection Sunday the Lord's day the Son of God that Jesus when he had come up out of the grave he said on the third day he would arose and he did and Jesus Christ would appear unto them later on here upon the road to Emmaus these men observed they observed the seven days of Passover Passover. They observed the seven sayings of Jesus while he was up on the cross. And yet they were going for a seven mile walk. 
here from Jerusalem and they were leaving the festive occasion and were walking out of town and going to Emmaus. Uh, these men as here were, had a sad countenance upon them. They did not really believe in the resurrected Jesus. They had already heard how the stone had rolled away, how the angel of the Lord appeared unto them, how Peter talked about the grave clothes and Peter witnessed about the napkin but they still did not believe in their head they had a certain ideal but not within their hearts and the Bible says here in the word of God that they drew that Jesus drew near unto them as they were going up out of Jerusalem walking on the road to Emmaus and they were talking about the things that had just happened in Jerusalem and Jesus said unto them he said what be these communications among you uh, and hear the word of the Lord the Lord himself the presence of God came up in the midst and they were talking about Jesus and said why are you so sad all they said we he heard about is Jesus he said that he was a prophet of God oh he had been he died on the cross was buried and you know what no one has saw the body they could not see the body and they, we haven't seen the Lord. All these other things, but we still haven't seen him. They really hadn't had an experience with God. Isn't it sad but true? There's a lot of folks today that are much like these disciples. I believe they're religious, but they don't have a relationship with Jesus. I believe some of them have, uh, uh, religio uh, have ritualism, but not spiritualism. Uh, they got all these forms that tell them but no power within. They really don't have a relationship with God. These men had a head knowledge but not a heart experience. You see, if you're going to believe in the resurrection, you've got to more believe in not just your intellect, but you've got to believe within all your heart. For the Bible says with the heart man shall be saved. For with the heart man confesseth, he said, and with the mouth and with the heart he believeth with salvation. It's got to be more than a head thing. It's got to be a heart thing. It's got to be a relationship with Jesus. And the presence and the power of God, he came up all these men as they walked on the road to Emmaus. Now the Lord drew near. I want you to see this because in the word of God, he says there in verse 17, he says, and he drew, excuse me, verse 15, he drew near unto them. Now I know what James says in James chapter 4 verse 8. He says if you'll draw nigh to God, he'll draw a nigh to you. You say, preacher, how do these men, they were leaving Jerusalem. How were they drawing nigh to God? Well, let me tell you, because here, seven days of Passover here, a holy week that which it was, I believe Easter is a holy week. I believe it's a special time of the year. And I believe God draws people where the message of the gospel is proclaimed without his creation around you within nature itself. It's been winter time and it's everything's laid down dormant, but spring when it comes and things come back to life again, creation shouts out the resurrection of Jesus. I see the resurrection in a lily. I see the resurrection on Sunday. I see the resurrection in baptism. I see the resurrection of Jesus. Well, thanks be unto God. I, you see the resurrection, I believe in the death, the burial for the resurrected Savior. I'm so glad I don't serve a dead Savior, but I serve a risen Savior. He's alive and well. Bless you holy name Buddha's still in the grave and Confucius is still in the grave but Jesus hallelujah has a rose Woo, the triumphant up over his foes hallelujah to the Lamb of God oh they drew nigh how did they drew nigh they observed the holy week my friend this whole us whole week from Palm Sunday the triumphant entry to Jesus cleansing it's about cleansing that week. It's about cleansing the temple when he went in. He turned over the tables and he took the whip and he drove them out. And oh, I said sometime, I heard a, a pastor on television. I had to turn him off. He said, well, and Jesus started cussing. I didn't find that in the word of God. He said, well, he said he got angry and he started, he said, you know, he started cussing and drove them out of the whips and the pastor lost it. Jesus, I want to tell you, Jesus did not sin. 
And I will get in another sermon on that, but there's sometimes there's a difference. You know, he got angry. That's why he turned the table. He got angry at the sin, but didn't get angry, he said, with a sinful wrath. He's a sinless son of God, but he drove them out. He drove them out of the, he cleansed the temple and purged it. Then he went on through and he had foot washing day with, on Thursday, just before the preparing there as they had the Lord's Supper. Then Good Friday, we had Good Friday. It was good for us, bad for Jesus. Jesus was crucified on the cross and he shed his precious blood. I said that if you observed, like these men here, if you observed all that whole week and witnessed the seven sayings of Jesus from afar and saw him die on Calvary's cross and shed his precious blood. Now, yes, it is without the shedding of blood. Hebrews 9, 22 said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Thank God for the precious blood of Jesus and already they sang about there this morning what can wash away my blood nothing but the blood of Jesus oh what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus thank God for the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross because you can get forgiveness of your sin they took him down and they wrapped him up and they anointed him and placed him in the tomb and all Sunday. Thank God for Sunday. He's a resurrected Savior. My friend, if you observe a resurrected Savior. <laughs> now the blood will get you forgiveness of sin. But it'll take a Sunday to get you out of your sin. It's the resurrected. He'll deliver you from your sin. It's a new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. As too many folks have been like this observer, they observe, they draw nigh. They were drawing nigh unto God. They were seeking a cleansing. And here they were as they witnessed this occasion. And you notice here, they, as they drew nigh to the Lord, you draw nigh to the Lord. And you know what the scripture says? He'll draw nigh to you. And the presence of God drew nigh to them as they were leaving Jerusalem here. And notice here their conversation. It's their communication. And as they were walking, and as they were talking, Jesus came up in the midst. That's why you got to be careful who you're talking about, because you'll never know who's behind you. Huh? But you want to draw nigh to God, talk about Jesus. Huh? The more you talk about Jesus, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I know it's needful, necessary in this world in which we live, but you know we've got to talk about some other things. Sometimes a lot of folks are talking about politics, and a lot of times we're talking about this and that out here in the world and all the problems in the world. But isn't it good when you just talk about Jesus? If you want to access and get in the presence of God, my friend, talk about Jesus. Brag on him a little bit and give him some praise. and See what the Lord will do. Let your conversation... Conversation not only means your talk, it's your walk, it's your lifestyle. Amen? When you go walking with Jesus, he comes up and he draws nigh to you. <laughs> and he comes up into the midst of it. Right up into the midst of it. And you got to notice as he's walking with them, the Bible says their hearts begin to burn. They had heartburn. This is a good heartburn. Now maybe you had to take, when we get a physical heartburn, you had to take antacid pills and so forth we do, and, and it, it kind of hurts, but this is a good, it's a heartworm. Now see, you can have a good sermon, has a good informing, a good head feeling, but you need a heartwarming. You need the Spirit of God to stir you. Only the Holy Spirit of God, He began as they talked with Him. And they still didn't get it. They still, their eyes, the Bible said their eyes were not open. They still, because they didn't believe in the resurrected Savior. They heard the other things. They had all these other infallible proofs. But they still couldn't believe in the resurrected Savior. So Jesus says he's talking with them and, and they draw nigh. And notice the company. They were two around company before that. And all of them was talking about, but some see, even this company here, he was as their company, excuse me, these two men, and they were had company together, but they still struggled within their doubts. And the Lord didn't leave them in that. But if you notice, think sometimes here in the Word of God, Jesus took them, he took them back to the Word of God. And on over in the verses, he said, O fools, 
Now, a fool is just, it's a terminology, it's said, because a fool, remember back a few weeks on back, I preached on that. A fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Remember, it's in your heart, not your head, it's your heart. See, God sees your heart. And Jesus knew these men, they had a head knowledge, but they didn't have a heart knowledge. And he had, he said, oh, you fools and you slow of heart, you. He said, what about the scriptures? If it wasn't enough, you've got the stone rolled away, the angels of the Lord, you've got the empty tomb, the, the body is not there. If that wasn't enough, he said, and the grave clothes and these things, and I've got Peter now believing, I've got Mary and him believing, and all these things, but if that wasn't enough, do you know you've got something that is documented and tangible that you can put right in your hands? It's called the Word of God. He said, I got, you got the Word of God. He said, from all the way from Genesis to Malachi, 39 books in the Old Testament, and you know from Genesis to Malachi, in every book you're going to find Jesus. There's 39 books in the Old Testament. In Genesis, you're going to find him as creator. In Exodus, you'll find him as Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he'll be your high priest. In Numbers, he'll be your brazen serpent. In Joshua, he'll be the captain of your salvation. In Ruth, he'll be your kinsman redeemer. In 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, and Kings, he said he'll be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus will be everything you ever need and so much more. But all the Old Testament books, they prophesied of him. He said, now, here he said, they've been prophesied of me. And now he said, it's historically. When Jesus died on Calvary's cross, then he was buried and he arose. Now it's all history in the making because he has fulfilled. He has fulfilled the word of God. It's all history. Now it needs to be dynamically as well. The dynamic is that the transformation, not just a conforming, but you need a transformation in your life. That's what Jesus does with the resurrected power of God. Paul said it like this in Philippians 3.10. There he he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. They needed an experience. They needed an encounter with God. They needed to believe in him and he would transform their very lives. Amen. Amen. You know you've got the word of God. If you don't believe the word of God on all these other things, Jesus took them back and he drew nigh. You can draw nigh to the Lord through cleansing. Through your conversation, your talk and your walk, and through the company you keep and through the word of God. And you can. Notice here he says in verse 29, and he dwelt with them. He walked with them and talked with them seven miles on the road to Emmaus. The Bible says, and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. He made as though he would go further, but he really wanted to stay. But you see, Jesus is a gentleman. He's not going to come where he's not welcome. And in verse 29, he says, but they constrained him. That means they desired, they compelled him. Come on, master, won't you abide? Won't you dwell with us? We want you, Lord, to come into our house, and come into our humble abode. Isn't that? Do you know you have to invite Jesus to come into this house, into your heart and your life? Jesus won't force his way in. He, he won't come where he's not welcome, but you have to invite him in. Amen. Isn't that Revelation 3 verse 20 said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice, and open up the door. He said, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. And Jesus, he will come in. Right. He will come in with them. And they begin to commune together. And you can commune and walk with the Lord. And then they as well, they commune with the breaking of bread. Now when did they really have this experience? When Jesus is no longer without, but he's within. When he had him, when he took him in the home. When you take Jesus in your heart, personally, and make him the Lord and Savior of your life, then you can commune with the Lord and you'll experience the resurrected Christ, the power of God. They, Jesus took the bread and he, he blessed the bread like he always did. He blessed it, he broke it, and he multiplied it. He gave it. 
Now, most people back then, if they made bread or had loaves, they would cut the bread. Jesus broke the bread. They knew enough to know that when he broke the bread, then they, their eyes were open. Breaking of bread, it means when they commune one with another with the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God takes up his abode on the inside of you, you'll commune one with another. You'll have a relationship with God. And you begin to walk and talk with him. And you're abiding in Jesus Christ and you have fellowship with God. The breaking of the bread, as soon as, I don't know if just the way that he broke and maybe began to distribute it as he blessed it, broke it and distributed the bread. But as soon as he did, then their eyes were open, And they believed that was the resurrected Christ. And they said within themselves, did not. They said, did not. Our hearts, our hearts have burned within us. You see, you need a heartwarming experience. Not just a flesh tingling and a goose pimple experience. Did you feel that in the service? I felt like my hair stood up on my arm as a preacher was preaching. That's the anointing. But I had a coldness in my heart. That's the convicting. You might have that this morning, but you know what? You can have a heartwarming experience if you'll let Jesus come into your heart and experience the resurrected Christ. Then you can commune with him, and then they confessed him. That's what they did when the whole they confessed him as he dwelt with them. Jesus, they looked upon him and confessed him with their mouth. They believed that he indeed was the resurrected now something else where they broke the bread or when he took that bread within his hands he had prints nails prints in his hands whether it be the way he took the bread or they noticed the prints in his hands later on he would appear to thomas a little later on in the day here and he had to appear to them in the upper room and thomas would not believe until he could see and some people today said, I will not believe until I see. I cannot see Jesus. But Jesus is saying, see, you see, he is saying if you believe, seeing, he said, believing is seeing. People want to see in order to believe. But he's actually in the word of God, believing is seeing. But he didn't leave Thomas in his doubt. He didn't leave these in their doubtful of positions as well but he worked with them and the prince and they noticed and they confessed him with their mouth you see when Jesus comes in your heart he's going to come out of your mouth and then after Christ he said he vanished the Lord vanished like that right before them in, the, in their home and they said our hearts did burn with fire did your heart burn a fire do you remember you have saved and received the Lord Jesus Christ you just couldn't wait when Jesus comes in. He starts coming out of your mouth. And you got on the job site and begin to tell others, I've received Jesus as my Savior. You see, Christian, if you have a heartwarming, a heartwarming experience with God, do you know what will happen? Your prayer life will be, have more fire within it. Your witnessing will have more fire within it. Your church attendance will pick up if you really get on fire with Jesus and let the presence and the power of God ignite you and excite you and let it burn on the inside. So many times, too many folks are living too far from Jesus, following from afar. And not following with the fall. Amen? The far in their heart. They confessed him and he vanished away. Now Jesus, they went back and they told the others, we've seen Jesus. Isn't it interesting? Seven mile walk out of town. Didn't seem like the day was, the, the time was passing. This was the evening. Didn't take them very long to get back, did it, to Jerusalem. Didn't get, take them very as long to get back to Jerusalem and all those other disciples and them, they had congregated together. Now, finally, I want you to notice one more thing. He departed from them. Verse 51, it reads that Jesus was carried and he ascended up into the heavens. Now, that's good that Jesus rose from the, the grave. That's how we get victory up over sin, death, and hell in the grave. But it's even better, Jesus had to depart from them. And he ascended back to the Father. 
And he sat at the right hand of God. See, Jesus said, it must needs be that I would go. In 40 days he was here. Then he ascended up off the Mount of Olives. And two men in white apparel told unto Peter and them. And he said, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing? This same Jesus, which you see going up into heaven, shall so come again. Well, he said, I'm going to send the promise. Why is it good that he went real quickly? Because the Holy Spirit came. Ten days later at Pentecost, he said, I'm going to, he said, you go to Jerusalem and you wait until you've been endued with power. See, more than just a bodily form that you could have, now you can have Jesus, as I said, in your heart, in your life. You need power to live the Christian life. Power to transform you, become a new creature in Christ Jesus. The power and presence of God. This is what he promised. And the Spirit came and he filled them in the upper room. 120 got filled with the Holy Ghost of God. They had a fire above their head that appeared as a flame of fire. The Lord ignited them and excited them. And they became the great world changers. And literally, as we know, turned the world upside down with the gospel of Jesus. Now, not only the promise of the Spirit, but Jesus, I said, if he goes. Remember he told us in John 14, if I go, I'll go and prepare a place for you. You ought to be glad he sent it back to heaven Amen. so the Holy Spirit could come and dwell with us, but also that he could prepare a place. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Well, David, haven't you done a lot of funerals? I don't know if you've noticed anything, Pastor, lately. Everybody's going to heaven. Huh? That's the way it seems. And maybe to a lot of folk, they want to believe. And somehow, they hadn't went to church for years. But, boy, they'll make the obituary. They went to church at so-and-so. Such and such. Yes, people out here sometimes witnessing door to door. Sometimes, where you go to church? I go down there to church at such and such. I say, oh, who's the pastor? Well, I don't know. It's been 10 years since I've been pastor. Huh? <laughs> you ask people, <laughs> you ask people various things like that sometimes, and they, it is living. They're living absolutely contrary to the Word of God. They're living in an unbelieving state of mind. Their walk and their talk is not all, it's all. They're living in sinful lifestyles and so forth. And yet today it's almost anything goes, Pastor. Everybody's going to heaven. Such and such was baptized when they was little. At the first such and such church. Well, baptism's good. That's ceremonialism. But that doesn't save you. It's, it's good to help you to grow if you're baptized and so forth, but it doesn't save you. You can't earn salvation. You can't buy salvation. You can't work for salvation. It's by the grace of God. But you must experience salvation. Salvation is a relationship. You've got to have a relationship with Jesus. He went to prepare, and the only way you're going to get to heaven, as you all know, is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'll tell you what, then the final thing, it's good that he went, because he's coming back again. And the reason he got up on the third day, and because he lives, we shall live also. He had a resurrected body, not limited to time nor space. He had a glorified body. And I may touch on this, Lord willing, tonight a little bit, but I want you to know so on over when he appeared to them and those disciples. And I'm about to close, so if the singers want to come, uh, I'd like to have a song. We'll get ready for invitation. If you'll notice the scripture, he says he appeared and as flesh and bone. You know, in John chapter 3, flesh and blood is not going to inherit the kingdom. You know, he was flesh and bone. Where was the blood? It was poured out on Friday. Jesus shed his blood. And by the way, you need men, you need blood in this physical body to live. 
But when it comes to a glorified spiritual body, you know who the life sustainer, the same one give you this life in the physical, is going to give you life in the spiritual, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. In heaven, there is no night there. The Son of God is a light. In heaven, the water of God, he's going to sustain us with the water of God, a glorified body. But when Jesus comes back, there's going to be a resurrection. And there's a lot of people, old saints of God, that out here lie in these cemeteries and have done a lot of planting. When you plant something, it tends on it to come back. Now, they're already there. They're spirit souls in heaven. But you see, when Jesus comes, for the Lord himself, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 70, for the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. You see, the Lord, when he saves you, he saves your spirit, your soul, and your body. He will save all of you, not some of you. Jesus, I'm going to get a new body. It's going to look better than it ever did. Amen. It's not going to have any more aches and it's not going to have any more pains. It's not all these former things are passed away. And we're going to have a great homecoming. Let's all stand. But if you're here today, I don't know what road you may be on today, but I can tell you in the Word of God, there's only really two. There's a broad road and a straight and narrow road. These men, I've all thought, everything that just happened, spent all week in Jerusalem, they went out of town going to Emmaus whether it be that that little town was called Warm Springs they didn't have uh, city water like me and you but you think about those warm if, I, if I'm not feeling well or when I was not feeling well times still do my mother told us as kids if you wouldn't feel well go, go take you and draw you some warm bath water make you feel better you know you'll feel bad if you get clean <laughs> if you get clean this morning oh sin you let sin your life in your heart and it'll pollute you you don't feel so good you don't smell so good you don't look so good when you're dirty but you know what I happen to think some of those men they were on their way up there in the soak in those warm springs maybe it'd make them feel a little better get a little cleaner physically they really needed was to be clean on the inside and experience the resurrected Savior. You need to experience him this morning as your Lord and Savior. Someone needs to be saved. Today is the day. Come, come on down to an altar prayer and ask Jesus to save your soul. He'll make you a fit subject for heaven. If you're not saved, won't you come? Let's sing. This is 